chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness, your home for gains and brains. That's right, I brought the old intro back at the request of many of you, and also at the request of many of you, are wondering if I'm still natty. In light of the recent image of my shoulders that I posted, I am now under suspicion. The fake natty police knocked on my door earlier today. I had to answer an extensive questionnaire. So I am now on watch. I am on the list. I am your new resident fake natty. And because of that, it is my job to make this video. And before we get into the list itself, I have to provide a lot of context and information because there's a lot to cover here. Some of you guys are going to be like, I just want to see the 10 signs, bro. It's important to know these things as well. And we are really going to dive into this topic. So sit down, buckle up, maybe grab a snack. And I rarely, if ever, make videos about this anymore. Maybe if there's something big to react to. I have said it repeatedly that I refuse to take this topic seriously. This topic has been lied about and bastardized. And there are just so many layers of nonsense and BS that it is impossible to really get legitimate answers, let alone trust what anybody says. I mean, even the people that are open about their use, they heavily, heavily downplay what they take. What kind of steroids were dudes doing back then? I mean, uh, basic. You know, your test, D-ball, it, it's just basic stuff. The highest I went this offseason was 400 milligrams a week. That puts me at about anywhere between 13 and 1600 nanograms per deciliter. Why you guys go on all these podcasts if you're just going to lie? They minimize their doses as much as they possibly can. Only TRT, bro. There's guys that are obviously using that still claim that they never do anything. I mean, the entire topic is a farce. That's why I treat it as such. If you are very mentally and emotionally tied to the whole natty subject at this point, I hate to burst your bubble, but you need to get over it. It is a bottomless pit of ignorance and stupidity, and the loudest mouths in these debates are clueless teenagers who don't know anything. And as a perfect illustration of what I mean, let's look at this quick video that I found on Instagram. It just encapsulates everything we're going to talk about. So this guy posts on his page, 61202, natural. So let's open up the comments. The first guy says, WTF is natural anymore. The bottom one says, two truths and a lie. The one in the middle says, prove that you're 61. I bet you're like 58. I'm 5'11", look taller than T-H-E-N-U. Now this guy replies, This is very much achievable. If I may be so generous, his body fat percentage is about 10 to 12, and with his height and weight, that puts his FFMI in about the 23-point zone, which is attainable naturally. Now as to whether or not he achieved this physique naturally, depending on the time frame, could potentially show otherwise. That is very true, and that's a very good point. This guy has a rare, mature take on this. And then we get to our boy here. He says, this is the most natural, achievable physique, well, he wrote physic, I have ever seen in this app. Don't complain about your lack of gains, saying random accusations. And then underneath that, this guy, Felipe Fit, replies, and you can see that I liked it. You're small, you have no clue. So let's take a look at 123 Romo, the guy who claims this is the most natural, achievable physique he's ever seen on this app. Let's see how much experience and knowledge that he probably has. One year of grinding, the amount of pain it took to get here, he's got on his anime shirt, never a good sign. And here's his physique. Need I say more? And I don't mean to pick on the kid, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. It is tons of teenagers that do not have nearly the amount of gym experience, and especially life experience, that are always the ones defending all of these guys, making all of these points. But that is really not surprising because you probably have as good of odds as beating Chris Bumstead at the Olympia as you do of convincing a teenager that he's wrong about something. Now keep in mind, once we get to this list, there is still no way to ever guarantee that somebody's natural. There is no way to ever prove this, no matter how much you think there is and no matter how much you want to convince yourself otherwise. Here's another great comment I saw on IG. This guy commented on some guy's photo. He said, I know you're natty, but I can't believe that you are. I want you to think about this for a moment. He quote unquote knows the guy in question is natural, even though he has absolutely no way to prove that, but he can't believe it. So in other words, this guy is basically gaslighting himself. And that's what so much of this natty conversation comes down to. In spite of pretty obvious evidence, 
especially the more experienced guys, they tend to be able to see this pretty quickly. People will still say, oh, but I like this guy. He wouldn't lie to me. He's very honest, etc. And they will just keep telling themselves, nah, man, he's not on anything. It is blind faith. It is belief. People want it to be true. They want to believe that their idols attained these dream Greek god physiques naturally. And they believe, or want to believe, that they will achieve the same thing without having to use the dastardly drugs that everybody else used. It's sort of like huffing on hopium, and you could even say overdosing on it. At this point, PEDs in high schools, they're on the way to becoming almost as popular as weed and alcohol. I go to serious gyms now, and I'm sure it's the same way even in the general commercial gym space, but I see these young dudes all the time, I've talked to some of them, they're 17, 18, 19 years old, they're obviously using. The size they've gotten to in only a year or so, especially the ones that are very lean and they're very big, it's just not possible in that time frame to achieve what they have achieved without exogenous hormones. And this is ultimately a side effect of influencer culture. Anybody can set up a tripod, take selfies and videos of themselves, and post it online, and there is a lot of potential incentive to do so. At this point, we are living in the clout Olympics. Social media controls more or less every aspect of people's lives, whether they will admit it or not. And people of all ages do this, but I think it really appeals to young men and women who have raging hormones, serious body image and self-esteem problems, and they are easily influenced. A lot of these teenagers that hop on, their brain is not even fully done developing yet. They may never have even lived outside of the home, let alone ever had just a basic job. They've done nothing but play video games and go out to eat their entire lives, and then they jump into PEDs. They have no idea of the long-term ramifications of these things. They just heard about it, they want to get big on Instagram, and they just start. And that is not advised, but that happens every single day. But you guys need to understand something. This can apply to teenagers or even older guys too. For every one Chris Bumstead who started juicing heavy in high school and became Mr. Olympia, or a very famous influencer or whatever, there are 10,000 who did a few cycles, got major side effects, lost all their gains, and probably quit lifting altogether. You see the glitz and the glamour and the fame on social media, but you never see the majority of cases in which the opposite is true. You don't see the 25-year-old who looks 55, unable to pay rent because of his drug bill, mentally and emotionally unstable, and obsessively chasing a dream that he simply does not have the genetics to ever obtain. The hardcore fitness lifestyle will chew you up and spit you out very, very quickly. I've met a number of people like this, oftentimes it is not pretty, and nobody is immune to it. And of course, guys will try to figure this out via Natty or Not videos, which are among the biggest waste of time on the internet. And once again, a lot of you don't have the life experience yet to intuitively think of these things, but this is pretty simple stuff. The guy making the video about the person in question will always give them a pass if they share a sponsor, if they collaborate, or if the guy in question just pays the guy enough to say he's natural, he's gonna say it. But more plates, more dates said, who gives a shit what he said? You think he's gonna turn down thousands of dollars to tell you that the guy he's interviewing is clearly juicing? Do you think a random blood work panel or random drug test is ironclad proof that somebody is natural? This stuff is really no different than politics, and I always laugh whenever I see comments saying something like, Oh, well, this guy would never go on gear. I know it. Right, just like the politician said he would never raise your taxes. Just like your ex-girlfriend said she would never leave you and you guys would be together forever. You remember that? Some of y'all believe everything at face value and you are the prime suckers for this type of thing. Uh, bro, he literally competed in a natural show. That means he's natty. Yeah, and I have a timeshare to sell you, buddy. You want to come see it? When it comes to the so-called drug-tested shows and meets, they are a complete farce. You can be on tons of stuff, come off for two weeks, even less time in a lot of cases. Some of these drugs have very, very short half-lives and detection times. Your blood work will be back to the normal range very quickly. You take your test, you pass, go right back on all the stuff. Here's an example. I remember in high school chemistry, we had a big final exam, and we all had to have those fancy scientific calculators. Unsurprisingly, one of the kids who was close to the teacher... He found the answer sheet, and naturally, he posted it online 
We all got the answers. We downloaded them. We all cheated on the test. And I remember our principal spoke to us after. He was like, we've never seen every single student, besides a few that just didn't have any friends, really. We've never seen anybody get this many A's in one final exam in the history of this school. And they realized, okay, you guys must have cheated. Now, we got caught because it was pretty painfully obvious. But imagine we didn't get caught. Imagine that information was only given to a handful of students and they got, if not even 100, you know, you kind of will mess up a few answers to make it look less suspicious. If only half of the class had the answer sheet and they passed and there were no suspicions raised, they didn't get caught. Ergo, they did not cheat. Even though they actually cheated, they simply did not get caught. It's like the old phrase, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? If you pass a drug test, but you actually were taking drugs right before it, are you even natural? Now, were you surprised that John Jones tested positive? Everybody's on steroids. I've talked about this before, and I guess people didn't believe me or they thought I was exaggerating, but I am never going to compete in a so-called natural federation in anything. I will never give them a cent of my money because I don't support them, and frankly, I hope they go bankrupt, and a lot of them are pretty close. So here is a screenshot from the NPL. This is a drug-tested powerlifting federation. They say on their entry page outright, they only test a top 10% targeted selection of the competitors with the highest Wilk scores. So even if somebody's blasting gear and they simply don't finish highly, they're natural. And pretty much every natural bodybuilding show does the same thing. Oftentimes, only the top three competitors get tested, sometimes only even the top one or two. You need to understand, these federations simply don't have enough money to test everybody. And really, nobody actually cares besides emotional fanboys on the internet who think just because their idol competed so-called naturally, that it proves that they're natural, which it doesn't. All right, so a little bit of an update on my 17-year-old client. He's currently two weeks out from his natural bodybuilding show. Originally, we had planned a show that was a little bit further out. He will be polygraphed before the show, and if he wins, he will be drug tested. Natural competitions are really nothing more than a charade for the most dedicated of fake natties to further validate their claims. So let's use everybody's favorite natty vegan bodybuilder, Mike O'Hearn, as an example. He is unanimously agreed upon as a fake, but he has never failed a drug test. Neither has this guy, Doug Miller. This is the amazing thing, because based on the logic of the natty-obsessed crowd, these guys must be natural. Because your only criteria to prove that someone is natty is them not failing a test. You see this over and over, oh, he passed the drug test, bro. Case closed. Okay, so did O'Hearn. So did Doug Miller. So did the laundry list of other obvious guys who were juicing. None of them have failed a drug test. So by y'all's own logic, they are natural. And you can't turn your back now and say, oh, but they're different because they're obvious in X, Y, and Z. Even if that's the case, you are invalidating your own logic because your only premise for someone to be natural is them passing the drug test. By that faulty reasoning, you can just say... Oh, Hearn's just got amazing genetics. All these guys just have just that great of genetics. An example I like to use is if we were in a court case and you were before a judge and Mike O'Hearn is on trial and you say, Your Honor, this guy clearly is a fake natty. Look at him. He just looks too crazy. He's too old. He stays lean too long. He never lost muscle mass with age, whatever. And the judge says, What's your proof? And you say, Judge, but look at him. The androgen receptor and the size and all this other stuff. And the judge says... Yes, but where is your hard evidence? Mike has never failed a drug test. He's never failed a polygraph. He could submit blood work that shows he's natural even if he just came off the stuff for a little bit of time. Do you see what I'm saying here? On top of that too, these so-called natural federations have very suspicious rules regarding TRT, HRT, and other hormones too. On top of the fact that some peptides like growth hormone are very hard if not impossible to detect on a test, as golfer Rory McIlroy has said before in interviews, and a lot of these tests are still catching up to some of the newer PEDs and more designer drugs that aren't even traceable yet. So when you say something like, he passed a drug test, those are very easy to beat if you are remotely intelligent at all. He passed a polygraph test. Don't even get me started. Polygraph tests just measure how nervous somebody gets when being questioned, and good liars 
don't get nervous. Lie detectors are not a valid piece of evidence, and they get rejected in court because of that. This has been confirmed by numerous scientists and crime experts over the years. You can look this up if you want to, we're not going to go into all the details right now. But real life is not a movie or TV show. I'll say this, if you get so nervous about taking gear that you crack under a polygraph test, you need to find another line of work, because you're just not cut out for this. Lying in this space about PEDs is second nature. It is just part of the job. And really, it's painfully easy. It is not difficult at all to say or type, no, I don't take anything. Or to type, yes, I'm natural. I could type on my keyboard right now and hit enter. It's right there on your screen. People lie about this to their husbands, their wives, their friends, family, doctors. But you guys are like, oh, but he said it on the internet. This guy that I don't know. It has to be true. And it's always the same old excuses every single time. Oh, bro, it's just the lighting, bro. It's just the angle, bro. And he's pumped up, bro. And he's really short, bro. Or perhaps my favorite, oh, he's got black genetics, bro. The notion of Natty Attainable has been skewed beyond comprehension because of these decades of lying. I mean, by the time someone is clearly juicing, like unquestionably so, even the normies will kind of see it, they've already been using for a number of years. I mean, really, unless you're at the point where it's painfully obvious that you're using, if you are, say, Sam Sulik's size or bigger, you are foolish to ever admit to doing so. But on the topic of Sam, this is exactly why this gets lied about so much. Because so many young dudes online, thanks to the decades and decades of lying and all of the garbage content, of guys who act like they just do a little bit, bro. Dudes think that you can do a cycle or two, the average Reddit cycle, oh, I'll just do 500 migs of test, bro, for 8 to 12 weeks. They think they're going to get results anywhere on the same stratosphere as Sam, with a moderate little dose like that for a modest amount of time. So take somebody like Sam, for example, who looks like this at age 21, 22, even at age 20. He probably was blasting since high school age 16 and maybe even 15 before he could legally get a driver's license. So just because somebody doesn't have a physique like Sulix, let alone anybody else that is in his size range, that does not guarantee that they're natural. This type of brain-dead thinking, though, is extremely pervasive, and it's constantly repeated. That is one of the most common defenses guys say, well, he's not that huge, bro. If he was juicing, he'd be massive. Uh, not necessarily, not at all. But because all of these naive people believe this, Admitting to juicing when you're not close to that level is basically a death wish. You're going to endlessly be made fun of and get roasted. People are going to say things like, huh, imagine needing PEDs for that mid-physique. Well, buddy, guess what? You're going to need them too. So as if all that wasn't enough, now we're going to dive into the top 10 signs that I could come up with. I think these encapsulate pretty much every major aspect of this conversation. Number one, I think this is going to be pretty obvious. It is plastered all over their social media. In the bio, and by extension, all the posts, the hashtags, the thumbnails, even in their username. Bonus points if they're always in their comment section replying to everybody accusing them of being a fake. Extra bonus points if the person always claiming natural does that fake smile in all their posts, especially their videos. <laughs> See? Natural, lifetime natural, stay natty kids. Shut the fuck up. I see some variation of these statements every single day. Nope. Lifetime natural. I'd never use that stuff. I have no reason to lie. I would tell you guys. Trust me. Or perhaps my favorite, why would I lie? Or somebody else asking on their behalf, why would they lie, bro? Eh, I don't know. Besides what, a dozen and a half reasons? It hurts your own public image. It can hurt your income. It can potentially bring up legal problems. Your family and friends can see it. It could cost you relationships. But no, there's no reason to lie. I'm still absolutely drug-free for life. I get my testosterone tested every, every third, every, every, not every quarter, three times a year. Even if somebody's physique is so-called natty attainable, if they talk about their natural status all the time, out of principle, I never believe them. Because by doing so, they are making it obvious they have an agenda. And by the way, this is why these people make their entire personalities revolve around being natural in the first place. It lowers suspicions right off the bat, and it looks way better from a public relations standpoint. Actual naturals without a hidden agenda, they don't have to go around beating their chest, proclaiming that they're natural every chance they get, and they also don't have to make it a cornerstone of their personality. They go about their life, choose not to use anything, and that's it. You know the old joke, how do you know that somebody's a vegan? They tell you in the first five seconds. These dudes are no different. They're like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, I'm a natural bodybuilder. You're like, uh, 
Okay. Well, how's it going? I'm uh, pretty good. I'm natural. Hey, uh, you gonna check in? No, I'm good. I'm natty. I'm natty. Now, as I've said before, it is not usually wise to speak in absolutes, but in this case, we have an exception. This is ironclad. This is 100% foolproof. If somebody has a natural in their bio, you can guarantee that they're not. And that goes into sign number two. The person makes it a moral issue. And this throws a lot of people off because once again, you guys take everything at face value. This is akin to somebody who goes around telling people how much of a good person he is, or some guy that's always bragging about how much money he has. It's called overcompensating. But attaching PEDs to morality is a great move for two big reasons. First of all, the general public and mainstream media portray it as such. They paint PED use as right versus wrong, good versus bad, as a test of somebody's character. Even if the person in question is not technically cheating, if they don't even compete in drug-tested federations, they still will get called a cheater. And taking shortcuts, all these other old stupid cliches, and I've gotten dozens of comments saying the same thing. I had a guy comment that using PEDs is worse than beating your wife. Another one said PED use is a mortal sin implying that you're guaranteed to go to hell if you use them. And of course, the natty zealots love to lump every user with general drug addicts. Even those that are on hard stuff like Heisenberg made, they actually will equate using general PEDs to being a meth head. A lot of this morality stuff really comes from old campaigns to try and scare teenagers away from taking juice. And as you can see, that has definitely worked. But the second big reason why this works so well is because it paints you as a righteous person who is worthy of being followed because you reject the dastardly drugs. With this one simple trick, you can now claim to be genetically and morally superior without having to be either. It's basically people with a god complex attracting other people with a god complex. I'm sure you've seen there is no shortage of narcissists in this space. And what do the vast majority of them have in common? Not only do they claim natural, they make it a cornerstone of their identity and their personality. You see all this stuff online, stay natty kids, stay natty bros, the natural way. After posting that piece of content, the guy will proceed to go into his restroom, fill up his needle, and stick it in his butt. And speaking of the morality complex, that goes into sign number three. They are friendly with other fakes. So like any good businessman, fake natties have at least a small number of associates they are constantly working and collaborating with who use the same business model as they are. By doing this, they can expand their network while at the same time lowering the collective suspicions of viewers who in turn become less likely to question them since they already like and trust the associates of said person. It's like regenerative agriculture, but instead of manure, it's pure bullshit. And I know every influencer has got top 5% genetics, especially the ones that you like. Everybody's different. They're not like other girls. That's why they were not serious athletes growing up or anything. They're just guys that got off the couch and went to the gym. But they're genetically elite because you want it to be true. If one of these guys gets called out or questioned, no matter what platform it's on, you can bet their associates will swoop in like a flock of birds to defend their honor and kiss their ass. And this comes from all angles. The guy's coach. The guy's fellow competitors other content creators and his associates, and of course his naive fanboys, as well as his mom. All of his associates, and big one here, those that want to be his associates, will defend him as if their life depends on it, because it kind of does. They all have to uphold the charade because if one of them in their group gets exposed, they become guilty by affiliation, and they can't have that. In the 2023 YouTube Fitness State of the Union address, I called this concept the church because it operates in the exact same way. Their core doctrine is being natural, and if you do not accept the message and spread the gospel to everybody else, you are not allowed in. Unless, of course, you have clout and a big following they can leech off of, then you're fine. Even if you're an admitted PED user and they claim that all PED users are bad influences and you should never listen to them or associate with them, you have some clout that they can leech off of, then you're going to be allowed in the church. Fucking hypocrites. Go ahead, bro. Pass that collection plate around. But like any good religion, your hypocrisy does not matter whenever you can hide behind the faith. And if you call out their faulty logic or hypocrisy or question one of their apostles, you might as well be Jesus because they will nail you to the cross right there. And as is unfortunately the case with so many religions, it clouds people's logical mind and they become more emotional 
than anything else. And I notice a lot of people in the fitness space are religious. They have some faith that they take pretty seriously. But for people so obsessed with getting into heaven, this is a hell of a business model that you guys are falling for. So now that we've covered the more social aspects, let's dive into the physical ones. The next sign is that you are getting eye-popping physique changes in a very fast time frame. In the general social media context, given most of your ages, this is commonly going to be late teens to early 20s, but even early teenagers now are getting in on the mix. It is not going to surprise me over the next number of years if we start seeing people with natural in their bio and their ages are only 13 to 14 years old. By the way, big shout out to the OG kid whose parents put Anavar in his formula whenever he was a baby. They were well ahead of their time. But I think a lot of you would be surprised at how many parents will eventually, or right out of the gate, encourage their kids, if not outright get them the stuff, to take their game to the next level. Especially those parents, those sports dads, living vicariously through their sons and their failed dreams. Oh yeah, that gets real. Those guys are obsessed with their son's performance. They want to win at all costs, perhaps even more than their own children do. I think Tristan Lee is a good example. It would not surprise me if his parents, or at least his dad, was putting him on the sauce at a very young age. That might also explain why his growth was stunted. There are countless examples of this you see online. I'll put up a quick example. This guy says he did this naturally in 22 months. But a fun game that I like to play whenever I take a dump, I just sit on my phone and I will scroll through my Discover feed. Just guess how many of them say natural in the caption or in the bio. Just scroll and scroll and scroll. They'll just keep coming up. Doesn't matter what country these guys live in, how old they are, whatever it's going to be, their ethnicity, anything. It's always the same thing. Some extreme transformation in a short time frame. If you could even bet on this with your friends, some of you can make a lot of money, especially if you're in the know and they aren't. But every single time, I'm like, this guy definitely claims Natty. Click on it, of course he does. I might have to put natural in my bio too as an experiment, because when you do so, I don't know what it is about the Instagram algorithm, but it loves that word. So this can encapsulate gaining huge amounts of muscle in a short time frame, getting really peeled, not just getting generally lean over the course of a few months. I'm talking going from 15-20% body fat to stage ready in only a couple months or so. Anytime you see these things to where your mind can immediately sense like, yeah, that just did not happen without external assistance, it's like a visceral reaction. Your brain is even telling you like, I don't compute this. This is not normal. Humans are not able to do that. A lot of you still are going to gaslight yourselves and be like, oh, well, bro, you know, it's just the angle and the lighting and the pump and the genetics. And this gets really obvious when somebody gets more ripped and adds size simultaneously. And that leads into the next point if somebody is ripped all the time. And I do not mean roughly 12% body fat or so. The vast majority of guys can attain that level if they really want to. Some of you can't because you can't control your appetite because of your food choices. That's a whole other video. We'll talk about that at some point in the future. But I'm talking these guys that are constantly sub 10%, especially in the athlete and X range. These guys are legit like 5-6% even seven or so, nobody is maintaining that naturally for any extended length of time, let alone year after year, potentially even for decades straight. If you think otherwise, like I said earlier, you just don't have the experience or the knowledge to participate in this conversation. There's an old saying, big, lean, natural. You can only pick two. And as a lot of you may have already learned the hard way or you will learn the hard way, that is true. Once again, guys, just because somebody is not massive does not mean that they're natural. That's one of the excuses guys give to someone like Athlean X, for example. They say, oh, well, Jeff is ripped, but he's not that big. And it's like, bro, you understand at his body fat level, I mean, at any age, but especially his age, and he's been that way for over a decade, which to his credit is extremely impressive. The discipline needed to stay that lean for this long is remarkable. But let's call a spade a spade. If he was totally natural at that level, he would be bedridden. You know, it's funny because people think I hate Athlean X because I've called him out on some of his BS over the years, and I do think he promotes ab anxiety, but truly, what he does is very, very impressive. And of course, he's not going to be honest because like we talked about earlier, he has major financial losses and credibility hits to be taken if he's ever honest about it. So that's the less extreme side. The more extreme side is when we get into IFBB Pro territory, and similar to that, at that point, it becomes so obvious that they're juicing if they lie about it. 
they just make themselves look bad. So even if you've got somebody that is natty attainable in terms of size, they're not that big bro, that still does not prove that they're natural. Because being extremely low body fat for any extended period of time, you're going to have extreme hormone problems, you're going to lose size, you may just simply lose your mind outright. Like, to consistently perform and stay sane and pump out content, let alone have a life, a family and kids and a normal job and all these other things without some means of external help, go ahead and try it, man. Let me know how it goes for you. And this obsession with being ripped is one of the reasons you see a lot of these guys get health problems and even die, like the case of Ziz. Because they're always ripped, they're on very low food. In a lot of cases, they may be on diuretics, which severely dehydrate them. They may be on fat burners and thyroid medication that make their heart rate really go up. A lot of these guys get involved in the club scene and the drinking scene too. They drink a lot of alcohol, they take party drugs, they're always bumping and dancing, take a lot of caffeine, their heart rate goes up even further. That's a lot of stress on your body, man. So I know it's very appealing to some of you to go to the EDM show and get shredded bra and dance with the girls and take all these things and live your life. But understand, if you're always ripped, I mean, even in general, these things are dangerous, but if you're always ripped and you're putting your heart under that much stress and you're not feeding your body properly, be careful, bro. Now, the next point here relates to gym performance. Namely, they start hitting crazy PRs reliably and very, very quickly. You could also call this very big swings in their gym performance, which is usually going to coincide with them blasting and then coming off or cruising. When they're on the blast, everything is flying up. Weekly PRs, when they come off, they're not going to lose all their strength, but if they were on a ton of stuff that they simply can't maintain for health reasons, they're probably going to lose a fair amount of it. So whenever you see these demonstrable swings in strength output, not just a rep or two, or maybe you miss a PR you thought you were going to get, when it's something that is very tangible and it's consistent, there's a good chance you know what is going on. So for example, me on the bench press, my PR was 275 pounds on my bulk that ended in 2022. And that was not even a full pause. I kind of rushed it because I was just desperate to hit the lift. But that was the most I got to weighing 190 pounds. Fast forward to the end of my bulk in 2023, I finally hit 315 with a full pause. So it counts more so this way. But I was grinding away for months and months and months to get to that point. But on the topic of the bench press, one of the biggest signs that somebody is juicing is that they don't lose their strength on presses whenever they are cutting. And especially if they're hitting pressing PRs on a cut, that is basically a dead giveaway. Almost every lifter experiences this, and a lot of the younger guys, the novices, don't understand this yet. They'll say, how come everybody says their bench goes down whenever they cut? This must be a meme. No, it is not, my boy. It is reality. There's a number of factors that impact this. Body mass overall, because mass moves mass, that's going to be affected. For example, me, I've went from 200 pounds to, I think I'm just under 170 at this point. People ask me, can you still bench 315? I have not tested it out because I just am not benching right now, but I would bet any amount of money that I cannot do 315 right now. Your range of motion increases because as you get less puffy, you have to move the bar farther to touch your chest. Even half an inch to an inch makes a major difference in terms of lifting weights, your overall strength output. So when you hear guys say something like, oh, I don't lose bench press strength whenever I cut, or I actually hit PRs whenever I cut on the bench press. I never had that problem, bro. We return back to the age-old question. Okay, so does this guy have top genetics, or is he full of shit like everybody else and he's taking some juice? and lying about it. You can guess the answer. And that leads us into the next topic. This is one that people do not think about a lot, but I've seen it many times. Somebody randomly disappears from the gym, and then they come back. I'm big! Something to keep an eye on when it comes to fitness content creators, and most of the big names will do this at least once. Everybody gets a pass one time. But something a lot of guys do, especially the longer that they're around this space, what commonly happens? They will make a video saying that they're going to quit YouTube. Of course, everybody's allegedly going to quit, but they don't. And they go totally dark, and they may blame it on, as we mentioned, an injury. They may say it's a mental health problem. They may say they're tired of lifting, whatever the reason's going to be. But in a lot of cases, you'll notice that they tend to disappear after they were on the top of the world. Maybe their channel was doing the best that it ever has. They look the best that they ever have, 
and then all of a sudden they have to go away, what do you think in a lot of those cases is really happening? They, in a lot of cases, were blasting gear. That's how they got the crazy results. They hit all the PRs. They got the crazy gains. They finally looked like a Greek god. Their blood work got really bad. Their health got really bad. And now it's time to come off all the stuff. But by coming off all the stuff, it's going to be apparent that they were on all the stuff, so they can't show you. Ergo, time to go bye-bye for a bit. Something I see on Instagram constantly are IFBB pros talking about their health phase. What that really translates to is, I came off my blasting of PEDs phase. So they got their blood work, it was a total disaster, and they don't want to, but they have to come off because they may actually die. What commonly happens as well, if they do continue posting, they will only appear on camera in large hoodies or sweatshirts or really baggy t-shirts and sweatpants. It's not always guaranteed to be the case. Sometimes in the off-season, for example, bodybuilders like to do that to kind of just not have to look at their fatness because it gives their body dysmorphia a flare-up. But in a lot of cases, if they are covering themselves up all the time, it's because they don't want people to see what they currently look like right now because the image of what they've portrayed online is very different from where they currently are. And some people are transparent about this, and I give them credit for that. Some of the more down-to-earth bodybuilders will put long-winded posts up about how their body image is suffering, so I can respect anybody who can show themselves in the less-than-ideal states. I've done that myself on this channel. I've showed you guys myself. No tan, bad lighting, peak bulk, and I got roasted for it, of course. But I think a lot of you guys resonated with that because... It was very unglamorous. It was just lifting and gaining size, but he does not look good by social media standards. A lot of people, given business reasons and their own body dysmorphia and body image, they will never do that. They come back with a vengeance. They jump back on all the sauce. They come out with a new program, a new product. They compete again. Whatever it's going to be, they return to how they used to look, maybe even better. And everybody comes back to watching them again. And oftentimes the cycle just repeats itself, and this just happens over and over and over for a number of years. You guys can figure it out if you're kind of perceptive. Now the next one has become very controversial with the rise of hypertrophy cell culture, but it is very true. It is being big but weak. And this is something that everybody intuitively used to understand until about roughly five or so years ago. Only then, with the rise of these nerds, did this become a contested topic? Now, there are some people who are not extremely muscular, at least you don't think they are, and they are remarkably strong. The guys who think this is a gotcha always say, see, there's tons of power lifters who are small, but they're crazy strong. To which my response is, of course, okay, name five. And they will say, uh, the skinny Asian guy that benches 400, and that's all they got. And understand something, even if they can search this up and name a handful of lifters who are remarkably strong for their size, extremely high body weight multipliers, they still can only name a handful of them, which is a minute fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the overall population of lifters. Exceptions do not break the rule. And that exactly proves my point. This is exceptionally rare. These guys have no understanding of basic statistics, but they're convinced that they're right. So you see this conjecture all the time. They say, oh, we know there's tons of power lifters who are very small and scrawny. Barely any gains. They look like noobs. D-Y-E-L. And they set records. They can't name even a handful of them. On the flip side, they will also say, oh, bro, we know there's tons of huge jacked bodybuilders that are pretty weak in comparison to their size. Once again, name a handful of them. They can't do it. These guys talk online as if there are champion-level bodybuilders who are only benching 225 for a handful of reps. In my power building video, I show numerous IFBB pros who do that style of training. They may even max out, God forbid, I know that's sacrilege in the hypertrophy community, on the bench in the squat and the deadlift and other heavy barbell exercises. None of them are short on size at all which goes directly in the face of what these dummies claim. Like, oh, well, you can't get big focusing on the basics, especially maxing out. These guys just talk out of their ass. Whether we're talking about bodybuilding, powerlifting, and there's often a lot of overlap between those two, off-season powerlifting, on-season bodybuilding, or even strongman. We see some strongmen crossing over nowadays, too. We used to all know this. The biggest people are the strongest people. 
we used to have a term for people that had really big muscles, big and swole, but they're very comparatively weak for their size. That term is juice head. Training for size and strength really is a simultaneous process. Now you can skew this one way or the other. You can train for maximum strength and focus on one rep maxing and very low rep sets and specialize on the bench and squat and deadlift, for example. But even so, you can go back throughout history. The bodybuilding powerlifting overlap is expansive. Arnold was a powerlifter. Franco Colombo was, Ronnie Coleman was, and a lot of the time as well, you will see that the powerlifters, people think that they barely have any size and that they're just fat. Once they cut down, they are bigger than the people that solely do the hypertrophy training. And that destroys their egos. So for every one or two examples you can find of a guy that benches a ton of weight with frail little arms or somebody that squats a crazy amount with relatively mediocre looking legs, there are 10,000 examples of guys who do that with huge chests, with huge arms, and with huge legs and huge backs. Exceptions do not make rules, no matter how often you guys pretend that they do. The exceptions to this rule are primarily a matter of genetics and elite muscle fiber distribution. And of course, some PEDs are likely in the mix. That's simply how it goes, even if competing so-called drug tested. When it comes to the guys that are very big, oftentimes this comes down to the PEDs that they take that blow them up especially certain ones that fill them up with water weight. They get puffy, they get their junk volume pump, they take their pictures and videos, they look really big. They're not even as big as they claim to look or how they present to look online. A lot of these guys fake their measurements. And even so, man, let me know how that goes for you. Let me know how it goes for you if you want to be a guy that so-called looks like you can bench 315, but you can only bench 225. Listen, buddy, if you want to look like you bench 315 for 99% of you, you're going to have to actually get to the point you can bench 315. I don't care how much these guys come on here and lie through their teeth. Oh, well, I lost 80 pounds on my bench press, but my chest has doubled in size. These guys are so full of shit. And in a lot of cases, they may actually have more strength potential than they realize, but because of the way they train, they're always in a fatigued state playing catch up, and they just refuse to give their body the time needed to properly adapt and to properly apply the strength that they have built via all the muscle mass that they've built. And that goes into the penultimate sign. They do a high volume, high frequency, and high intensity all at the same time. This is a cornerstone of a lot of pro bodybuilding programming. They're in the gym constantly. They do a laundry list of exercises and they push everything to failure, if not doing assisted reps and struggling constantly. If you do not have a lot of hormonal assistance, you are going to bury yourself with this style of training. We talked earlier about picking between big, lean, and or natural. You also have to pick between high volume, intensity, and or frequency. So when one of these variables goes up, one has to go down by default. If you want to have any hopes of fully recovering, because as we know, heightened fatigue is the biggest detriment to recovering, and recovering is when you build muscle. These type of workouts, you're going to be so fatigued after even your second or third exercise that you cannot possibly grow anymore. After a certain point, you are just fatiguing yourself and artificially inflating your pump. Can't walk after legs, bro. Oh, my arms are so blown up, I can't even lift them overhead. That's cool. And like I said, that makes for really good photos and videos. You get your drunk volume pump and you look really swole. Maybe have a carb up meal, drink a lot of water, a lot of sodium. You artificially look bigger in the moment, but you're not helping your growth at all. If you're going to be on PEDs, you can at least siphon some more growth out of those things. If you're totally natural, bro, you are just going to bury yourself. Even if you are bloat maxing your face off, eating everything in sight, sleeping 10 hours a day, all you do is eat, sleep, gym, repeat. There is a cap you have, at least as a natural, even on moderate doses of gear, man. The cap is not as high as a lot of you guys think to just keep packing on muscle mass. So even the biggest mass monsters, I mean, they're not really doing themselves any favors by training in this style. But it's popular and it looks cool and they can recover from the assistance, so they keep doing it. As a genuine natural, you have way less room for error when it comes to these factors. And you could argue even if you're enhanced, you're going to get better results from your enhancement when you have these things dialed in and keep them modest. You could basically boil this point down as such. If somebody is reliably growing, in spite of all the roadblocks they're throwing in front of themselves, 
it could be genetics, it could be all the other things, or they're getting some help. Oh, he's just built different, bro. Uh, yeah, sure. And that leads us on to the final point, number 10 here. Let me check my notes. They make a living and gain influence from their physique. 